Hi, I'm Mary Logsdon, and here I am at your library. Today is the last taping of At Your Library here in our temporary library space, which we've occupied since the winter of 2012. Um, we're really excited uh, to be looking at the upcoming closure and move back to 515 Douglas, and to give you all a sneak peek at what there is to expect once we open in our new library, I've got some wonderful guests planned to sit down with me today. So stick around. Well, as I told you, I have two very special guests today, Library Director Lynn Carey. Hello. Hi there, Lynn. And Jerry Hyde, our Youth Services Manager. Hello. And I'm really happy to have both of you here um, to give us a little bit of a glimpse into uh, what we can expect in our new building. And I thought if there's anybody around town who can do that, the two of you ought to be able to help us to paint a picture. Yeah, especially <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> well, no, I think um, any of us who work at Ames Public Library, uh, we're getting fever pitch excited yeah. about what's to come very, very soon. Yeah. Well, as I um, was telling the viewers, um, this uh, show is going to be airing in August, um, and that will be just about prime time um, from the for the community. Um, lots is going. Lot will be happening. Um, so, just a little bit of a recap about our timeline. Um, what's going on here? Um, you know, what's the first thing that's going to happen? We're very busily working in the building mm -hmm. um, to get things ready for us to be able to move in. Right. So furniture's going into place, the shelves are all up, uh, ready to accept books mm -hmm. onto them, and staff is, is still in major planning mode, getting ready to move everything out of the temporary space and over to the library. So in the next few weeks, mm -hmm. that's what we'll be doing. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk dates? Well, sure. I think people will want to take out their calendars right now and mark down a few key yes. dates. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on August 17th, mm -hmm. that is our last day of service from the temporary building. Right. And honestly, I'm a little surprised to say this, but there's a little bit of bittersweetness yeah. of mm -hmm. saying goodbye to this, this space that has really served us so very well. That's true. Um, but not that much bittersweetness because <laughs> we're, we're so excited about moving back into the renewed building. So August 17th, mm -hmm. um, we'll operate as usual from 1 to 5. Right. Um, we're asking people to stock up um, because then we'll be closed for four weeks. Right. Um, also on August 17th, we will be doing the book brigade. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be closed, as I said, for four weeks. The first two weeks will be intensive moving of stuff. Right. We, of course, need to vacate the, the temporary spaces that we've had and get them ready to turn back over to the landlords right. and move everything into the renewed library and get it ready for service. Mm -hmm. um, then the second two weeks we will be doing intensive training for all staff members and volunteers, mm -hmm. learning all the systems of the building and um, where everything is right. and how we will be operating. And then on September 14th we will be opening our doors mm -hmm. with a, a brief civic program at one o'clock and then open for business until five and then we'll be back in business as usual. It's just really amazing to be thinking that that's not very far away. It's at, not very far away. At all. And um, I think we've all, as you said, we've been uh, so delighted with the uh, level of service we've been able to provide here. Um, and it's just been wonderful to see folks come in in large numbers. Jerry, I often am amazed at the amount of families and children you're able to serve here at the library. Uh, our, our quaint little space has done a very, very nice job of, and, and uh, again, a kind of a bittersweet because you know, when we move back into the 515 Douglas spot, we'll have a story time room again or a programming room that mm -hmm. people will separate from the main collection or the browsing collection and mm -hmm. come into a room and we'll be in a separate room. Uh -huh. um, where here we've had, you know, that 
all people are seeing what you're doing yeah. and, or, and even adults. It's, it's been amazing to see and watch their enjoyment and people peeking around the stacks just to see what we're doing. We won't have that in the new building, um, but we will have a fabulous oh, new yeah. area. It's one of those things I think that when when you move back, you'll remember some of the things that you really missed yeah. <laughs> or, you know, you had before. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it'll be um, an, a nice place to it's been a nice place to be in, but it's going to be a nice place to say goodbye to yes, <laughs> and absolutely. say hello to our new building. Well, as you said earlier, everyone on the staff has been really, really deeply involved with thinking about yes. every aspect of how we deliver service, um, how we interact with customers. Um, and I know that we're really excited about thinking about what we can do that we haven't been able to right. do here. So what is it that really... Like, gets you excited, Jerry, mostly about the new the youth building. service. <laughs> yeah. Well, my um, little beacon of the corner beacon there yeah. across from the octagon and on, on that corner with our, our windows and the seating that's there, mm. um, the blue, uh, and I'm not sure what kind of material it is, but um, it's just a, a wonderful space to sit and, and um, you're kind of... Um, covered with blue and know that you're part of smiles and, oh, okay. and, and all that wonderful wonderfulness in that area where families will be able to get together mm -hmm. um, moms with young kids and um, we'll be able to network together and find friends and mm -hmm. uh, make coffee dates and, and do all those wonderful networking type of things and um, and then of course there's the story time room that right. has this awesome tree I mean the word that keeps coming and I keep using all over and over and over again is how awesome it is yeah um, and because of the space and because of what the div not to divide families, but to, you know, there really actually are different places for different ages that are mm -hmm. appropriate for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm especially the big orange area that's going to be the tween area um, and the maker space that's over in, oh. in that other, the opposite corner, um, will just be a wonderful draw. Mm -hmm. And since I've been here at Ames and I don't, um, we've not had a space for that age group. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, I think think that age group you know we've been grow we grow readers and we've been just throwing them out the nest and say oh come back when you're a teen yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know we have your books but you know we don't have a space for you so now we have a space and so we have little nests of people around so. I, I like that image little nests and so really I think the library I know we've all been involved with the um, design um, stages from when we were delighted with the um, positive response to the bond referendum a couple of years ago, um, just thinking about, so what can happen on this piece of real estate? And I think you're right. I, what's going to be pretty exciting about the library as a whole is that there are places for all different kinds of activities for people of all different ages and groupings. Um, and I know, Lynn, there are some really very nice features um, on the second floor, too, that kind of um, relate to what Jerry was just saying. I mean, is there anything there that really catches your eye when you're walking through? Well, I think um, yesterday I was walking through with a couple of people, mm -hmm. and it always helps to have someone who's not been yeah. intimately involved to give you a fresh perspective. And what I kept thinking was, this space is somehow simultaneously calming and stimulating. Oh. And a, that's a difficult balance to achieve, yeah. and I think we've done it. Great. And it, it sort of fits in with the whole, um, what could be a dichotomy, but is actually a blending of old and new, calm and stimulating. Mm -hmm. um, so truly, I think in the same way that youth services is covering, you know, spanning the ages, mm -hmm. we continue to do that throughout the whole building and upstairs of having something for everyone. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I'm most excited about in the upstairs, the um, general general services for adults area is the variety of seating areas. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities, again, as you mentioned, for networking, for getting together, for community building. Sure. Um, there are also little corners and pockets if you just want to come in and, and um, hunker down with a good book mm -hmm. or with a tablet. And so there really is something for everyone. Yeah. There are study rooms, there are different ways of accessing information, mm -hmm. different formats of books, different formats of technology, mm -hmm. um, just a wide, wide variety. And it's something that, that does require space, but it also requires just 
thinking differently about how you provide service. Mm -hmm. And we've had three years now yeah. to do, um, well, run a library in the background, yes. but also really put our thinking hats on and think about how people use the library mm -hmm. and what might be beneficial to them. And we, it's coming to fruition. Yeah, it's just really awesome, like you said, um, to see it come, um, come to a point where we can open up the doors and share it with everyone and mm -hmm. say, this is, you know, let's get into this together now. Um, one of the really wonderful features, I think, is also that we've designed a lot of flexibility in mm -hmm. um, the design and architecture. Um, uh, one of the uh, nice additions, it seems to me, is what we've done to the historic section of the library. Um, if you talk about flexibility, what's happened on that piece of property between 1904 and today, I mean, that just is mm -hmm. spanning many, many decades and many ideas of how to deliver library service. The renewed library, I think, is going to be pretty um, special to people when when they go over to that side of the historic buildings. Mm -hmm. So do you just want to just give us a little bit of a rundown of what's going to be different on the second floor where the meeting rooms and the administrative um, offices are? One of the things that we're very pleased with is the amount of space that we're able to dedicate to civic engagement. Yeah. So we have more meeting rooms. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have three seminar rooms and a boardroom. Mm -hmm. We've actually moved our boardroom out into public space right. so that any group can mm -hmm. use it um, as a boardroom setting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we've done is tried to recreate a sense of the, the openness and um, colors of the original yeah. 1940 um, area. And it's just stunning. Mm -hmm. it's, um, mm -hmm. it's simple and elegant yeah. um, and very inviting. So nice civic space there. And then we have our administrative offices there. Mm -hmm. And a nice new feature is a heritage room. Great. So our former boardroom mm -hmm. has been turned over to uh, local history. Mm -hmm. um, of, of course, we always cooperate um, and work with the Historical Society, which is right across the, the street from us. But we have a few items that we'll be featuring there mm -hmm. and working with them to have some displays. So that'll be a really nice yeah. nice space that we haven't had in the past. Yeah, that's wonderful. And that's something that I don't know that we've talked as much about. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things that really um, struck me when uh, on a recent visit was just, as you said, it's really very stunning. It's an area to, I think everyone should really feel proud, proud of. And from that, uh, vantage point you can actually see out into the new so there is a really a lovely mix of old and new um, as you said I think that the architects have really done a nice job of blending those um, those features of our building um, I know people are probably curious about what happens to their library materials while we're closed so I think it's a great it's great to remind them um, we close for business on August 18th. Uh, if everyone has things checked out, what what should they do? They can keep them. Keep them, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or if they'd like to return them, we will have drop boxes mm -hmm. open as much as, as we can. Mm -hmm. So the plan is on August 18th, we'll start moving, but we'll have uh, drop boxes open at the um, renewed library. Right. Probably that first week we'll, we won't have the alley drop box open mm -hmm. simply because we'll be installing the machinery on the other side of the sure. wall. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as soon as we can we'll have the alley drop box open. Mm -hmm. Certainly we'll have the front um, entry drop box okay. open mm -hmm. so people can pull up out front and drop their materials in. Mm -hmm. um, we'll close the one here right. but we'll always have somewhere that people can return materials. Mm -hmm. um, we've already started adjusting due dates, mm -hmm. so nothing will be due during the time that we're closed. Right. So nobody has to worry about accruing fines. Mm -hmm. um, if they had something that was due prior to the closing and they had already started accruing fines, that accrual will stop okay. during the time that we're closed. So uh, we'll, we'll try to make it as easy as we can on mm -hmm. our end. Um, people will not be able to check on their own accounts mm -hmm. during that time. So we just want the message to be 
don't worry. Yeah. Um, there's no need really to check on your personal account because nothing's happening right. with it. There um, no you're not, fines. not getting fines. Um, nothing bad is happening. Okay. We are encouraging people to stock up because we know um, being closed four weeks um, mm -hmm. is a problem. Right. Um, and we also will encourage you to get out and visit the other lovely libraries in the county. Mm -hmm. um, we have some um, just really wonderful spaces that are in the small towns around us yep. and I'm sure that they would be thrilled to see Ames people coming over and uh, using their facilities okay. in the same way that, that we welcome um, their citizens into the Ames Library. Yeah, so. that's, that's a really nice uh, invitation to you know encourage people to go out and see what other library resources are available. Um, Jerry, I know that we're also going to allow folks, though, to still get to the library's website um, yep. while we're closed. There might be some hiccups when we transfer the servers and mm -hmm. things behind the scenes, but pretty much you'll be able to access um, the catalog and um, see what we have. Um, and our e-resources, for instance, e our digital right. um, resources, our e-books, um, uh, the other... And like tumble books for children, okay. uh, those type of things will still be available for okay. your use. Um, from home, right? Um, and so will be partially available. Yeah. Um, but when you were talking about um, just don't worry, I w was thinking about remember this is going to date me and maybe all of us. The don't worry, be happy. Yes. Yeah. I don't remember it because I'm just far You're too. too yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Well, <laughs> in my day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, be happy. And yeah. and I was thinking, yeah, don't worry about your account. Just be happy about what you're going to get to see. Yeah. On yeah, on the grand right. opening day on September 14th. I think we've just. And it's fabulous. I think we have our new bumper sticker. There we go. Don't <laughs> I, worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> so I am just so grateful that you took the time um, and your busy schedules to sit down with me and to just hopefully get the um, folks in the community excited about um, what we can expect once we open on September 14th. One other date I just wanted to mention, um, in addition to the grand opening civic event on Sunday, September 14th at 1 o'clock, right before we <laughs> go into the new doors, um, there is going to be a um, party um, celebration that's happening on September 5th. Do you just want to tell us Absolutely. what that is, this please? This is going to be quite an event. Okay. Um, our Ames Public Library Friends Foundation mm -hmm. is organizing a gala celebration um, sneak peek of wow. the, the new facility. And it will be just a very fun party. Everyone's invited. There is a, a fee. It's a fundraiser. Okay. So it's $75 per person. Um, you can sign up from right from our website. Mm -hmm. If you go in and go to the, the little on the left under support your library oh, right. you can sign up from there um, again everyone's welcome we we would love to see everyone put on clothes that make them happy and show up uh, to the library to really celebrate the grand accomplishments of this community and getting ready um, so that'll be great yeah, fun terrific and i'm turning the tables on on the interviewer here yes. what are you excited about oh you know um Everything that you both said. <laughs> um, but in addition to that, I think it's just really going to be special to see that the way that the building has um, bridged the old and the new. There's something very uh, lovely about that, I believe. And I think there are just some really grand spaces where when you enter, you have this sense that, oh, something special is going to happen here. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that surprised me. I wasn't, I wasn't envisioning that that was going to be such a large element of the, of the building. Um, but every time I go in there, I just feel the sense that, you know, great ideas or um, quiet thoughts or nice conversations and, um, just really special things can happen in this space. I think it's going to really um, um, make people feel like they want to linger and not just rush in and out necessarily. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. I'm excited about what we've been able to achieve on that special piece of property that has um, been a part of the community since 1904. It's truly going to be a destination for I think our so. community. I think um, so. And, and you should be able to 
be in one space and feel one way. You know, you should be able to change with the moods yeah. <laughs> as well, yeah. you know, just going to different areas. So, But I do hope that I can come peek around at the storytelling room. You sure can. <laughs> and, you know, um, come visit I... our big barn door okay. and our tree anytime you want. Yes. Anybody's welcome to do that. And, you know, the little theater will be there too, which yeah. has always mm -hmm. been a grand draw for both um, old and young. Yeah. So. So we'll be, we'll, we will be just like the community. We're going to be exploring, I think, a yes. lot yes. once yes. we get in there. So thanks for asking, Lynn. And thanks for being here. And um, just in a moment, we'll feature some of our new um, additions to the library's collection. Thank you once again. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm so glad that Lynn and Jerry took the time today to sit and talk with me, to share with all of you some of the exciting um, aspects of the uh, new building, uh, which we are really, really eager to open up um, so that we can get back to delivering great library service to you this fall. Um, just a reminder, uh, all of the items that you have checked out from the library um, will be due after we reopen. So you do not need to be concerned about having any overdue items while the library is closed. Um, and one more point I just want to emphasize is you will still have access to the library's website and the um, electronic resources that we have available to you there. So if you are a, um, a tablet owner, um, iPad, um, Kindle, uh, if you just like to download books on your computer, uh, you should feel free to continue to do so. Um, you'll have access to those services. Um, and as I said, you can of course hang on to any books, um, mu music, movies, um, audiobooks that you have checked out while we're closed. So please continue to enjoy the services of the Ames Public Library um, in the um, weeks while we're closed. Um, and just hang on because we'll be reopening and have wonderful, wonderful facility and services um, to share with you. Um, September 14th. Once again, this is Mary Logsdon. Kind of happy to say that this is my last taping at your temporary Ames Public Library location. See you in September.